Now on WDRB News at 1130. Uh, it's a tragedy that's happened. There is a person's deceased, and that's very unfortunate, and our prayers are with them. A crash between a fire truck and a car leaves one person dead. What happened in the moments before the crash? From Ivy Tech student to inmate, how police say this woman bought more than $7,000 worth of items in other students' names. Well, it's the last full day of summer. Doesn't really quite feel like it, though. Temperatures are going to be into the 90s today. Will we get any relief from the heat? We'll talk about it. Souring a happy day. The reason one wedding DJ admits he stole from clients at a wedding reception. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. I'm Rachel Collier. And I'm Valerie Chen. A horrific crash in Louisville this morning ended with a fire truck mangled, a car in shambles, and one person dead. WDRB's Gilbert Corsi has been at the scene all morning and explains what witnesses say happened. Gilbert? I'm at Algonquin Parkway off McCloskey Avenue in front of the LaSalle Apartments, and behind me is that shattered fire truck. You can see the scar or the skid mark for where it ran off the road, hit a tree, and eventually collided with some bricks. And if you think that this is bad, on the other side, look at the car on the other end of the crash. It is crunched and it is destroyed. One person died here, and witnesses say it's a man who was inside that car. A female passenger also from the car was rushed to the hospital with what appeared to be a leg or an ankle injury, and all four firefighters on the truck also went for emergency care. Police tell us they're expected to be okay. Now to what happened. Police say the truck was heading west on Algonquin Parkway on the way to a run, siren blaring. The Mercury was trying to cross Algonquin at McCross or McCloskey, and they smacked in the middle of the street. In fact, the victim's body ended up in the middle of the road, about 100 feet away from where the car was originally hit. Police not saying whether the deceased was in that car, but again, I've spoken to several witnesses who have confirmed it, including a father who saw this crash unfold as he was driving his son to school. Yeah, I hollered, oh my God, I can't believe it. And he looks up, what's wrong, Dad? Then he looked up and saw it. Hello. And the fire truck, I mean, if you show it, I mean, it's just mangled. I mean, he was, uh, the, the, uh, the ladder driver was trying to keep control of the back of the truck and hit a couple of, couple of trees were taken out. I mean, it was just, it was something that you see on TV. Back here live, I've just gotten confirmed from the fire department that this is truck company three from the station located at 6th and Hill Streets. When I see you again live at noon, we're going to get into the police end of the investigation. And I'll show you an up-close look at the car on the other end of this crash. For now, live off Algonquin, Gilbert Corsi, WDRB News. Gilbert, thank you. The funeral for a Louisville fire sergeant who lost his battle with cancer is happening right now. Here's a live look from the service at Iroquois Amphitheater. Timothy Groft was a 15-year veteran of the Louisville Fire Department. Family members say he lost his long battle with cancer of the esophagus over the weekend. His death from cancer marks the first in Louisville that could be considered a line of duty death since a new law passed last year. As long as it is approved, Groff's family will receive $80,000 in death benefits and his son would be eligible for free in-state tuition. Groff will be buried at Calvary Cemetery. An Indiana college student is accused of using other students' ID numbers to buy thousands of dollars worth of items. 20-year-old Bianca Mitchell of Versailles, Indiana, was arrested yesterday. Police say she stole school ID numbers from students at the Ivy Tech Community College Madison campus where she's a student. She's accused of using those numbers to buy over $7,000 worth of items from the school's online store. Mitchell is facing charges of identity deception, theft, and fraud. The heat wave is in effect. Katie McGraw explains how long we'll stay in the 90s. Katie? Well, this is really going to be quite the wave. Really, we're going to see temperatures in the 90s for several days and feeling even warmer thanks to those sticky dew points into the middle and upper 60s, even the 70s for today. Hard to believe that it's the last full day of summer. Fall begins in just one day tomorrow at 4.02. So we have one day and a couple of hours, about four hours or so. We do have clear skies across the area and not much to talk about there. We could potentially see a stray shower 
or a thunderstorm, very similar to yesterday. We do have a cold front position just up to the north. You can see that low churning up towards Chicago in the northern part of Illinois, but not really going to impact us all of that much. And of course, what's making lots of headlines is Hurricane Maria still at a category three. It's expected to move up towards the Turks and Caicos and just to the east of the Bahamas. And then there's Tropical Storm Jose, and it's continuing to churn just off the east coast near Boston and New York. Back towards home, we are going to be having pretty quiet conditions throughout the entire day. It's just not going to feel very fall like. Currently at 82, that dew point of 70. So when we get to a high of 90 degrees today, it could feel like the middle 90s. I'm going to tell you when we could potentially see a little bit of a cool down, feeling a little bit more like fall, or at least seasonable, coming up in just a few. Katie, thank you. Hurricane Maria is bringing high winds and rough waters to the Dominican Republic. Maria regained Category 3 status early this morning. The storm hit Puerto Rico, destroying homes and leaving the island without power. President Trump approved a disaster declaration there and in the U.S. Virgin Islands to make federal funding available. At least 10 people across the Caribbean have been killed by the storm. Maria is expected to move towards Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas tonight and tomorrow. Rescue crews are still searching for survivors today after a massive earthquake. At least 250 people were killed and nearly 2,000 injured. The 7.1 quake hit central Mexico Tuesday. Rescuers are searching through debris. Dozens of survivors have been pulled alive from the rubble. Many schools in Mexico City were seriously damaged, leading to trapped children being rescued. Just when we were going to run down, part of the building collapsed and everything was dust and we couldn't see anything. The English teacher helped us come down because we couldn't use the stairs. They were moving a lot. Mexico has declared three days of mourning. A Southern Indiana High School theater coach is accused of kissing and fondling a student. 30-year-old Alonzo Richmond works with the drama department at Silver Creek High School. He's charged with felony child seduction. He's accused of kissing and fondling a 17-year-old student after a Saturday rehearsal at a Sellersburg Park. The rehearsal was not a school event, but police say several students were participating. The parent uh, of a 17-year-old juvenile contacted the state police and uh, relayed information that Mr. Richmond had uh, uh, kissed and uh, fondled uh, the buttocks of uh, this person's 17-year-old son. West Clark Community Schools has suspended Richmond during the investigation. He is banned from having contact with students, is not allowed on school property. If convicted, Richmond could spend up to two and a half years in prison. Controversy over Clarksville Cemetery has people demanding answers. Crews removed remains from Stewart Emory Cemetery in June to make way for a road project. Officials are trying to figure out whether they can rebury the bodies. The Clarksville town manager says they do not own the property and records don't clarify who does own it. Descendants say they have deeds showing they own the property. This is terrible. This is a first family of Clark County. These are very important people in this cemetery, and for them to be uh, treated like this, I, I just cannot fathom. Several families say they want to take legal action if the remains are not returned. Medical marijuana will stay illegal in Kentucky. A Franklin Circuit Court judge rejects an attempt to overturn the state's ban on medical marijuana. He dismissed a lawsuit filed by three people who use medical marijuana, claiming they have a constitutional right to use it. The judge says they don't because it violates Kentucky's controlled substance law. 29 states have legalized marijuana, mostly for medicinal use. Kentucky lawmakers have failed to consider such proposals. Get caught drinking and driving more than once in Jefferson County and you'll get sent to camp. It takes a sample every 30 minutes of your insensible perspiration. That's the sweat you can't see. And um, with that data, we can tell if an individual has been drinking. Last month, Louisville implemented the Continuous Alcohol Monitoring Program, also known as CAMP. The program is for repeat DUI offenders and monitors alcohol consumption around the clock. Anyone placed in CAMP is required to wear an ankle bracelet that detects the use of alcohol through perspiration. Right now, only 10 people are in the program. The county attorney's office is requesting all repeat offenders be placed in CAMP. 
another effort to prevent impaired driving accidents in the state. The National Center for DWI Course Reform and Responsibility Tour made its first ever stop in Louisville this morning. It's bringing state leaders and national experts together to work on solutions that can help Kentucky put an end to impaired driving. One specific group of people the event focused on, veterans. We want to see within the veterans community, veterans who have a DUI or DWI also be afforded the same uh, type of treatment possibilities because certainly there's punishment and consequence that have to go with that behavior, but let's try to get to the root of the problem. Why are they driving impaired? The tour is also set to make stops in Illinois, Colorado, and Florida. A deputy left handcuffed on the side of the road. He was handcuffed, yep. And he asked the uh, 911, do you have a way to get the cuffs off me? Because they, they hurt quite a bit. And How an inmate managed to overpower the deputy before stealing his car. Nurses fired, newborns forced to dance to music, and worse. What one nurse called a baby while making an obscene gesture toward him. Hunt is on for a prison inmate in Nebraska who broke free and left a deputy handcuffed on the side of the road. Michelle Bander explains how the inmate managed to steal the deputy's car during the escape. A major clue in the hunt for the escaped inmate, the Dodge County Sheriff's deputy's car found here in the Nebraska Furniture Mart parking lot, abandoned, no sign of Eric Scott. The car discovered hours after Scott attacked the deputy. To come out of it uh, and to be able to tell about it, um, was certainly a positive. The deputy found himself locked in his own handcuffs, stranded on this rural county road south of Wahoo in Saunders County. I pull up slowly to him and and I thought, uh, something doesn't look right. Started out as an ordinary day for farmer Jason Swanson, driving by when he spotted the deputy. He was handcuffed, yep. And he asked the uh, 911, do you have a way to get the cuffs off me? Because they hurt quite a bit. and and. When the state trooper pulled up, he had a key right in his pocket and got him undone. It all started when the inmate managed to get out of his restraints from the back seat and strangled the deputy while he was driving on Highway 77. The deputy tried to get help from another driver. He attempted uh, to slow down uh, as another vehicle was behind him, trying to get that vehicle's attention. Uh, but he said the inmate then uh, really put the pressure on his neck uh, so he wasn't able to get the attention of another uh, motorist. Sheriff Stukenholtz says Scott tossed the deputy's AR-15 out of the window and the deputy also got rid of his service revolver. But Scott circled back to get one gun. We believe he's pretty desperate. He told the deputy, he said, I'm not going to die in jail. He was calm, yeah. He, he asked me on the way back when we're coming back, how's your day going? I said, my day's been really good. He said, yeah, I, I'm lucky to be alive, he said. So, very true. That was Michelle Bander reporting. The deputy did receive some treatment, but he is okay. A DJ in Pennsylvania admits to robbing his clients at wedding receptions. A newlywed couple first noticed an issue when they only had 15 cards from a reception with more than 100 guests. Guests told Ashley Karasek and her husband that their DJ, Edward McCarty, kept the card box behind his DJ booth. The Karaseks say they were missing $4,800. McCarty told police he stole the money because he was having financial problems. People were telling me now that they had to give him our, their cards to give, and, put, and he was putting them in the box. McCarty claims he only took $80, not $4,800. He's charged with receiving stolen property and theft. They were supposed to be caring for newborns. Instead, some Florida nurses could face criminal charges. Cell phone video show the nurses forcing newborns to dance to music. Another video shows one nurse making an obscene gesture towards a baby and yelling mini Satans. The Jacksonville Naval Hospital apologized on Facebook for the nurses' actions. The nurses have been fired. Pay your child's school lunch bill or we'll take you to court. A school district in Missouri is threatening legal action against parents. The Southern Boone School Board says 70 families owe about $30,000 to the district. A new policy says parents with unpaid charges will not be able to attend events like graduation. The district could eventually take parents to court if the unpaid balance hits $500. Parents do have the option of filing a payment with the district so they can attend events and avoid court.
A Clarksville police officer on the wrong side of the law. What he's accused of taking from a youth football league. We are already three degrees warmer than our normal high for this time of the year on the last full day of summer. I'll tell you how warm we're going to get today and how long this heat wave is going to last coming up. WDRB weather sponsored by VisionWorks, doctors of optometry. Fall is tomorrow, but no boots or leggings. Not no. that kind of weather. <laughs> if you <laughs> want it like to it. feel like fall, I guess you're going to have to like light the fall candles or get <laughs> That's them. What she's done. Yeah, yep. me too. <laughs> and get the PSLs. <laughs> it's uh, hard to believe tomorrow at 4.02 is that official change of season. So we have a little bit more than one day at this point, but it's mere hours. Temperatures in the past day have gained five degrees. So yesterday was pretty warm. We're even warmer than that at this point. We do have a few clouds across the area, but it's still very sunny. And to put our temperatures in perspective, even our currents right now at 82 are normal highs for this time of the year. Right as we're changing season, 79. So we're already three degrees warmer than that. Plus, adding in that dew point of 70 degrees, it feels like 86. So we have a heat index across the area. So everybody's feeling slightly warmer. 82 for Henryville, 85 in Tulanesville, 81 for Campbellsville, and 82 for E-Town. Widening out this perspective, it's hot really everywhere across the, uh, just the Ohio River Valley, Tennessee, and then all the way out into the Midwest as well. So charting out our dew points for the next couple of days, they're still going to be pretty sticky, but I think that today is going to be really the worst. We're going to continue to see these dew points into the middle 60s for the next few days, so that's still going to be noticeable and just enough to make it feel a little more sticky. Now, this is what our current radar looks like. Not seeing too much activity, but I do think they'll have the potential for a few stray showers throughout the course of today, maybe a thunderstorm as well, very similar to what we had yesterday. And there is a cold front position just up to our north. That's where there's a lot more activity. It's not going to look like that for us. They're going to be very isolated, very spotty. This is what advanced track is showing us as we get throughout the course of today. They're going to be these hit or miss type showers and they're only really going to be during the heat of the day. By the time our sun sets, seven o'clock hour, mind you, at 740 or so, that's when we're going to really drop that chance for rain. Now the rest of today, I'm going with a high of 90 degrees, but it's going to feel like the middle 90s again because we have that heat index. Calm winds and then tonight dropping that chance for rain. It'll be mostly clear 71 degrees with calm winds. So all in all, not too shabby. And we do have high pressure across the area just down to our south. That weak cold front just up to the north. And as we get into Friday, very similar to today. It's going to be hot. Still going to be humid. We have that chance for a stray shower or two. The weekend looks pretty spectacular, though. We'll have lots of sunshine across the area. It's still going to be hot. It's still going to be pretty humid. But our next real chance for rain is holding off into next week. Checking in with Hurricane Irma, currently a Category 3 storm. It's expected to move up to the northwest towards the Turks and Caicos into Friday through the weekend as a Category 2, and then continuing to head up to the north and then hopefully continuing to take that northeasterly turn, which is what this model is suggesting. A 10% chance on Friday. Dry for the weekend, though. Look how warm it is. Lower 90s. When do we get some relief? It does look like it's in the 7-day, and I'll show you that coming up in the next half hour. Very steamy. Thank you, Katie. Six days on the run, a goat spotted checking into a hotel. The way the animal was able to escape his farm to go on a trip around town. Facilities like this help prevent uh, accidents that involve children or, or loved ones or anything like that. There's nothing that could be worse than, than someone getting shot by mistake. The new gun range allowing police and civilians to train side by side. Police and civilians can now shoot side by side at a new indoor gun range in Clarksville. WDRB's Sarah Sider explains how law enforcement officials say it could make southern Indiana safer. The indoor gun range in southern Indiana, it serves as a training facility and a public safety tool. It's brand new to Clarksville and a big plus for local law enforcement. Uh, having the range is, is a great asset to the whole area as, as well as the department. American Shooters on West Bell Avenue opened last week. Before then, Clarksville police officers could train outdoors. The closest indoor range was across the river. 
Now officers and civilians can train here on high-tech courses. It presents itself in a manner that uh, prevents people from shooting too quickly or too slowly. Police say this range adds to public safety. And facilities like this help prevent uh, accidents that involve children or, or loved ones or anything like that. There's nothing that could be worse than someone getting shot by mistake. Well, we just felt the need uh, for education. Owner Rick Haber says the facility has three classrooms taught by two NRA certified instructors. He encourages adults, especially parents and their kids, to sign up. There's a lot of, a lot of people that have concealed carry permits legally and walking around and do not know how to use a firearm. He hopes the range helps prevent any future accidents from happening. People who drive cars have to get some type of training uh, and, and firearms are the same way. You don't want to endanger your family by not doing some type of training and doing the responsible thing. Sarah Sidery, WDRB News. Let's take a look at what's trending now on our website, WDRB.com. A Louisville mother is mistakenly put on a list of deadbeat parents by the county attorney's office, who she says should have been on the list instead of her. Louisville's ranked one of the worst cities in the country for dog attacks on postal carriers. What's being done to keep mail carriers safe while on the job? A man riding a horse on the highway in Stanford, Kentucky, is arrested after leading police on a chase. What he reportedly yelled at the officers before taking off. To read these stories, go to WDRB.com. Here's a look at what's making headlines now on WDRB News at Noon. A fire truck headed to an emergency is involved in this crash. One person was killed. What investigators still don't know. A Clarksville police officer facing charges. How much money he's accused of taking from a local youth football league. Fall starts tomorrow, but it does not feel like it. Temperatures are going to be into the middle 90s for the heat index. When will we get some relief from this heat? I'll tell you that coming up. Thanks for staying with us on WDRB News at Noon. I'm Valerie Chen. And I'm Rachel Collier. A crash involving a fire truck and a car leaves one person dead. WDRB's Gilbert Corsi is live from Algonquin Parkway with new developments in the last half hour. Gilbert? New in the last 30 minutes, I can tell you the coroner's office has removed the victim's body from the middle of the street, Algonquin Parkway out here. The body which came from this car. I'm going to step out of the way and, and give you a better look here. You can see that it is really busted from the front bumper all the way to the rear. The wheels, the roof, the hood, it's all mangled and destroyed. And if you think this is bad, then take a look at the fire truck, truck three from the station off six and hill. You can actually see the scar mark or the skin in the road where it ran off. It took down a tree and then went through a brick. All four firefighters on the truck went to the hospital. One with minor injuries. We're told they're all expected to be okay. A female passenger in the car also went to the hospital with what appeared to be an ankle or a leg injury. Non-life-threatening injuries what authorities are telling us out here. Now to what happened. Police say the truck was heading west on Algonquin just before 9 this morning on an emergency run. Sirens blaring. The Green Mercury was trying to cross Algonquin at McCloskey Avenue and they smacked in the middle of the street. The victim's body ended up in the middle of Algonquin Parkway, about 100 feet away from the car that he was riding in. Now, police are not saying yet whether the deceased was inside this green car, but I spoke with several witnesses who have confirmed it, including one father who saw the crash unfold as he was driving his son to school. An unbelievable sight that a, that a fire, a, a massive fire to a hook and ladder fire truck with a third, with a drive on the back, just running into trees, knocking over trees, knocking over uh, a brick uh, wall, so to speak, at LaSalle Place. I mean, it was just a, it was just a heck of a scene. Now back here live, the victim's family has started to arrive at the scene. They have told me his name, but we are not sharing it because we're told at this minute his mother does not know. We hope to have that information for you today at 4 o'clock. We're now live off Algonquin Parkway. Gilbert Corsi, WDRB News. Gilbert, thank you. A Clarksville police officer is accused of stealing thousands of dollars from a local youth football league. WDRB's Chris Suter reports that officer claims it was just a mistake. Chris? 
Val, Officer Joe Hoskins had a not guilty plea entered for him here today at the Clark County Courthouse. This all stems back to mid-July when the president of Clarksville Little Generals Youth Football League discovered over 5,000 bucks missing from its bank account. Hoskins is the treasurer for the league. He claims because his social security number was associated with both his personal account and the league's that there was a mix-up and the money was accidentally transferred. Prosecutor Jeremy Mole isn't exactly buying that story. Anybody saying that this was uh, not done on purpose, I can simply say that uh, the records reflect that uh, somebody got online uh, to the Little League account uh, that he had access to and transferred it into his bank account and then he used that money to pay his own personal bills and his own personal living expenses. Hoskins is paying the money back to the league with payments. His lawyer telling us the league's board decided there was no malicious intent here. Hoskins is suspended without pay, uh, without pay from the Clarksville Police Department. He's due back in court on November 7th. Live in Jeffersonville this afternoon, I'm Chris Suter, WDRB News. Thank you, Chris. A man is behind bars after a stolen Boy Scout trailer was found in Bullock County. 43-year-old David Simmons is charged with receiving stolen property after Troop 376's trailer was found in a barn in Shepherdsville. It was stolen from an Oklahoma church parking lot earlier this month. The Scoutmaster says most of the camping supplies in the trailer are missing. Simmons also faces drug charges. He has a long criminal history dating back to 1973, including convictions for burglary, theft, and receiving stolen property. The 90s will stick around for several days. Katie McGraw explains if we'll stay dry. I think that we could see an isolated shower throughout the course of today, very similar to what we saw yesterday, but most of us will stay dry. It's about a 10% chance. Right now, we're not seeing any activity. It's really sunny outside, hot and humid as well. If we pull out this image a bit of the current radar and satellite, you see that there's more activity into the western and northern part of Illinois. That's where there's lots of cloud cover and also some showers and thunderstorms associated with a cold front. Now, throughout the course of today, again, we are going to have more sunshine than anything else, but we also will have the potential for a few stray showers and thunderstorms. Checking in with Hurricane Maria, it is currently a Category 3 storm. It is expected to move up towards the Turks and Caicos and then continue to push up to the north and east away from most land masses, so that is good news. We also are still keeping a pulse on Tropical Storm Jose, which is just churning and churning off of the northeastern part of the Atlantic coast. And that's really where it's planned to stay. It doesn't look like it's going to be moving for a couple of days. Currently, it's 87 in Louisville. Incredibly warm, and the dew point has actually gone up 2 degrees, so it feels like 93. Very summer-like on this last full day of summer. And we are going to see temperatures stay into about the lower 90s, so therefore the heat index, or what it feels like, going to be into the middle 90s. There was that 10% chance during the afternoon, but notice I drop it at 9 p.m. When will we get some relief from the heat? It's on the 7-day. I'll show you which day coming up. Katie, thank you. A former Bullet County deputy is accused of stealing drugs from the evidence room. Yesterday, a grand jury indicted former Bullet Chief Deputy John Cottrell. He's facing several charges, including theft of drugs, abuse of public trust, and official misconduct. The indictment says Cottrell took marijuana, hydrocodone, and other pills from the evidence room. This has become a fight between Cottrell and his former employer, the Sheriff's Office. Do you feel like they've targeted you at all? Oh, absolutely. And how so? Uh, again, that's part of the civil case, so I really can't discuss it. Cottrell is expected in court this afternoon to discuss an unrelated felony forgery case. That case was dismissed. One firefighter suffers burns to his hand while battling a fire near Churchill Downs. It happened last night on Thornberry Avenue near Phyllis Avenue. Officials say the fire likely started in the back of the home. Spokesperson says it appears the homeowner tried putting out the fire with a garden hose. One firefighter suffered burns to his left hand and is being treated at the University of Louisville Hospital's burn unit. He's expected to remain there for the next seven to ten days. Yeah, while you're wearing protective equipment, um, you know, sometimes just the heat. We have we have uh, situations where um, you know firefighters are are, are burned. Officials have not determined how the fire started.
Video of the former lead singer for Lincoln Park is shedding light on the reality of depression. Chester Bennington's wife tweeted this video of him laughing and smiling with friends and family just days before his suicide. His wife said this is what depression looked like to us just 36 hours before his death. Bennington's wife added depression doesn't have a face or a mood. Experts say depression is a disease caused by chemical and electrical malfunctions in the brain. It may look to the people around them like they feel fine, but inside they don't. A local mental health services professional says recovery is possible with the right medications and therapies. She says there's an 85% success rate with proper treatment. Making books and technology more accessible in Northeast Louisville. Officials broke ground on the 40,000 square foot Northeast Regional Library today. It's off Ormsby Station Road near the Northeast YMCA. It'll replace the much smaller Westport branch located inside Westport Middle School. The new building will feature an expanded book and DVD collection, an auditorium, meeting rooms, and a separate teen space. So when you think about what it means to our city, and how we're trying to promote health and lifelong learning and compassion. It's all going to come together in this space right around here. The almost $18 million building is expected to be finished in early 2019. This is the final of three regional libraries, which include the Southwest and South Central Regional Libraries. Getting off the grid. We are a small town, but I do believe we're more progressive than people give us credit for. The changes North Vernon, Indiana is making to its power source. Plus a foul mess left behind by geese. The potentially deadly disease some Clarksville town employees say they've gotten because of the birds. The city of North Vernon, Indiana is going off the grid. WDRB's Joel Skipper shed some light on how the city plans to power up. Street lights like this one behind me will soon be using zero electricity, setting a precedent for towns like this in Indiana. We have the green space. We have the availability to do this. Not every place has this, and so they've not been able to do this. North Vernon, Indiana Mayor Mike Oakes says all the city's government buildings will soon be on the map and off the grid when it comes to the city's power usage. The police station, airport, fire department, sewer plant, parks, and city hall will be generated during the day in solar power. The city's 579 street lights will all be switched as well. The first step is changing the light bulbs in the city buildings to LED. We'll go down to zero usage of, of, of electricity during the day, and at night we don't use anything anyway. That's a first for the state, according to Mayor Oaks. The city's library installed these solar panels two years ago and has since saved more than $40,000. We are a small town, but I do believe we're more progressive than people give us credit for. Holly Bergmeier is manager of Miller's Tavern, a bar that's been here in downtown North Vernon since 1937. Oh, I think it's awesome. I, you know, you've got a blend of old and new. The project is costing the city $5 million, and it's one Jennings County is considering. The mayor says taxes of residents will not be raised because of the money that will be saved. The city plans to save nearly $4 million additional dollars over the next 20 years. It's good that we're using solar power because we're actually using like resources around us instead of using like all the energy and the energy bills and stuff. Yeah. I don't want people to, to get the idea that just because we're a small town, we're not going to have things done. Uh, we're, going, we're, we're going to do things here. The mayor hopes to get all the solar power up and running by the first of the year. Reporting in North Vernon, Indiana, Joel Skipper, WDRB News. Two Clarksville town employees contract a respiratory illness from goose droppings. You'd have some coughing, you'd have some respiratory issues, you know, shortness of breath. Two employees got histoplasmosis from droppings at the municipal building on Veterans Parkway. People often get the disease from breathing in spores from bird and bat droppings while cleaning up the mess. In extreme cases, the disease can be fatal. The Clarksville Town Council has been criticized over the past month for euthanizing more than 200 geese. They cited health concerns as the reason they had to get rid of the animals. Beer with a unique ingredient. The unusual water source three Colorado breweries are using to make beer. Katie? Well, it's going to be hot and humid for the next couple of days, but it does look like there's a bit of a cool down in that seven-day forecast. I'll show you when we finally get a little bit of a relief from the heat coming up.
WDRB Weather, sponsored by VisionWorks, doctors of optometry. It is already 87 degrees outside with that dew point of 72. Feels like the middle of summer, not the end of summer, more like July or August. And we are going to continue to see these temperatures climb, so therefore it's only going to get hotter. You can see that there's a couple of clouds developing as well. Showers and thunderstorms not out of the question for today. They're going to be pretty isolated, but if you want to bring the umbrella with you, not a bad idea. Other temperatures across Kentucky, and we're looking at 81 for Shelbyville, 82 for Campbellsville, and then 85 for Henryville and also for Lanesville. And this is a similar theme that we're seeing even that wider perspective. But the other feels like temperatures, so that heat index, you see that we have a couple of 90s, 95 for Jasper, 92 into Austin, 93 into Bedford, and then matching 90 for Hardinsburg, Litchfield, and also for Mumfordville. So it's incredibly warm, and that's all because of the dew point. So what it feels like when you take the air temperature and then add in that moisture content of the air. We are going to continue to have some sticky dew points for the next couple of days, but I think today is one of our most stifling days. And then it's going to be into the upper and middle 60s straight through the weekend, so not as humid. We are seeing just a few clouds across the area, but still plenty of sunshine. And as I mentioned, we could potentially see an isolated stray shower thunderstorm throughout the afternoon right in the middle of the heat of the day. We do have a cold front position just up to the north and west and as we move as I mentioned throughout the course of the afternoon you can see on advanced track here a couple of these blossoming showers and storms. They're going to be the hit or miss type so hard to predict exactly where they'll blossom throughout the course of the day but after the sun sets, which is at 741 for today, that's when they'll pretty much end. So going with a high, actually bump this up one degree, 91, stray storm possible. Tonight we will see mostly clear skies, dropping that chance for rain, 71 degrees, so 20 degrees cooler than our high temperature. And we do have that cold front, but otherwise we're being dominated by a ridge of high pressure. Tomorrow's gonna be a very similar forecast. We can sort of rinse and repeat it. And then the weekend, is going to be pretty spectacular, but very summer like as we start the new season of fall. We are still going to have temperatures into the 90s feeling slightly warmer than that. Hurricane Maria currently at a category three storm and it's going to continue to move up to the north and west towards the Turks and Caicos, then as a category two storm and then eventually and hopefully it keeps that track and veers up to the north and east away from the east coast. Now look at this seven day forecast. We're going to stay into the 90s all the way through the middle part of next week. Finally on Thursday, looks like we're going to get some relief at 83, but we'll bring some showers and storms, our best chance for showers and storms on Thursday as well. But look at all those 90s, very hot. Some Colorado breweries are using recycled wastewater in the brewing process. An engineering firm dropped off 330 gallons of recycled wastewater at three Denver breweries. They began using the water in their brewing process this week, and next week the engineering firm will host a festival to blind taste test the beer made with the recycled <laughs> wastewater. Mm. Hope they made sure and got that water all purified. Yes. <laughs> Budweiser says it's willing to foot the bill for your designated driver. The brewery is offering up to 150,000 free round trip weekend rides through Lyft. Budweiser is giving out ride codes on their Facebook and Instagram pages every Thursday. The offer starts today and extends through the rest of the year. Rides can be redeemed in nine states, including Illinois, Missouri, and Florida. Cool and confident, a guest walks right past the check-in desk at a hotel in the middle of the night. Where else this goat was spotted during his six-day escape from a farm. 911, someone stole my drugs. That's what police in Indiana say a teenage girl called them to say. Today at 4, what police say she was planning to do with the drugs before they were stolen from her? One smart goat escapes his pen, evades police, and then checks into a hotel. This goat on the run for six days, spotted on a highway and near a school in Millbury, Massachusetts. Then he was caught on surveillance walking past check-in at a hotel at four in the morning. He searched a room while a clerk closed the door and called police. They take off like a bullet. When he took off, he took off like a criminal. <laughs> the coat's owner says he had to hop a five-foot fence to escape. He was brought back to the farm where a new pen will be built for him.
mischievous. Yes, he doesn't want to be in the pen, that's why. <laughs> He's like, I want to go out and have some fun. Go to the hotel. Yeah, yeah of course. good time to go outside and have some fun. It's hot. It is. Too bad the pools aren't still open because it's going to be into the 90s all week long. Of course, the official change of fall tomorrow. We won't feel like it, though, till the end of next week. We'll see you at 4. Have a great day.